from The Guardian. What to expect from the State of the Union? Well, Biden is supposedly going to announce the U.S. will build a port on the Gaza shore for large scale aid delivery. Ladies and gentlemen, Biden is expected to announce the State of the Union. The U.S. will deploy troops on the ground in Gaza in what must be the most psychotic thing I have ever heard a president a plan to say at a State of the Union. Biden has been freaking out over the far left pro-Palestinian activists. And so now you've got members of the Biden administration saying things like, we want a ceasefire. You know, we, what, what, what did uh, um, Kamala Harris say? We want a ceasefire and Israel should do everything they can to get the hostages back. And it's like, you're talking out both sides of your mouth. They know that if they don't get the pro-Gaza leftists, they cannot win. So what is Biden doing? This is a mistake. We should not be sending boots on the ground for one, one thing. This is an attempt to appease the far left. It won't work because he's saying we are going to colonize Gaza. That's wild. This is World War Three. World War Three, sadly, and more U.S. service members are about to get killed. A strong men and women, the ones that should be here protecting us. Our border. They're exactly at least our border, but they're being sent to foreign nations, foreign nations to fight for this proxy war. I want to see the odds on that Biden deploying troops to the border next to nothing. Right? That's never going to happen. It's oh, plus that would be like 10, plus, yeah, plus a million. A hundred dollar uh, bet wins you a million bucks. Does this article say how, because what they'll do is they'll say, we're just sending in peacekeepers right now or advisors or like I merchants or something. I saw that it's like a temporary port. <clears throat> Ten, they called temporary. the port temporary. temporary. That's what they did in Vietnam. They sent advisors first. Yes. It was like 10,000 dudes or how many. For aid. Yeah, like yeah. 10,000 armed advisors. Just to advise the, uh, the, the locals on how to. And then, of And that's course, how also COVID started. It was temporary. You stayed home for three, five days, but then- Oh, it just, was for the next two, three years. Yeah. I just realized Ian's 51st state may be becoming true finally. <laughs> yeah. That's it's wild, funny because dude. what's going to happen is the history book's going to be like, in the year 2023, Joe Biden was watching Tim Cast IRL when Ian Crossland mentioned making Gaza the 51st state. I Biden, openly Biden, oppose this. I want Biden everyone to know that. Biden reportedly turned to Kamala Harris and said, this guy's on to something. <laughs> Perfect. We A year the, later, the land a colony was established. And <laughs> Next year, it's not on IRL because he's an advisor in the this Biden is, White House. I'll be the first governor I, of Gaza. This is the conquering of Gaza. <laughs> this is the end of Gaza. It's not if, funny. If the U.S. builds a port in Gaza while Israel is engaged in a ground, inv a ground uh, a military campaign invasion, it's simple. This is the beginning of the end of, of the Gaza They'll start trip. shipping people out into the United States. Yep. This is like mm -hmm. just mass immigration. Yeah, it's, we have, it's not good. Yeah, we have about 20 more, I would say more by the end of 2024, 20 plus illegal immigrants in our nation. Guess what's going to happen with those people from Gaza? They're going to be coming here. And don't forget that those people hate the United States of America, the majority of them. Yeah, they don't want our way of life. Exactly. I think what's hard about this situation for Biden's team, I can imagine, is that there's there's absolutely no good solution. There is no way for him to uh, navigate this international crisis in a way that appeases both sides of his base. Because let's be honest, I really don't think Joe Biden truly cares about anyone from Israel, anyone from Gaza, he is trying to get reelected. His, in a weird warped way, his attention is on American voters, only progressive ones that he's hoping will, will go to the go to the ballot for him and or go to the voting booth for him. And I think this is a polarizing issue. I know it can be among conservative circles too, but definitely among uh, older people who would consider themselves Democrats and younger people who consider themselves Democrats. Yeah, this is wild. Someone drove up on the sidewalk at D.C. revving the engine at pro-Palestine pro protesters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they arrested him. There's like a wild video of the cops like throwing the driver to the ground. He's wearing like a purple button-up shirt and they towed his car. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. But but pro-Gaza uh, protesters have been pretty vocal about the fact that they're frustrated with Biden. I mean, there was a, a rally earlier this year that they were throwing like smoke bombs and stuff towards the White House. It's something they feel strongly about. And again, I don't know that there is a way that Biden is ever going to be able to negotiate a like, look, I have worked out a compromise. I'm helping both sides solution that makes anyone happy. I mean, in any compromise here, both sides will feel like they lose. And that is support taken away from I, Biden. I think if, if he really does, I mean, the news is reporting that this is what he's going to announce. He announces this. I think he can't win. Like no legitimate path to victory. And I don't even know if his old allies from 2020 will help him cheat. Like th there's there's no argument. There's no procedural path. 
you do this, and this is Joe Biden saying, we are standing against Israel. Yeah. If he builds the port. Yeah. Yeah, it's like him saying, we can't, we're, they're still our allies, we can't stop them, but we're going to do our best for damage control. If he it's sells saying, that to the far we, left. You know. We are going to give money to Israel for defense and then also provide aid and comfort and resources to the people they're at war with. It is quite literally Biden announcing they will stand against Israel. It's a war. There's two sides. You yeah. can't provide aid and comfort to the enemy of one side. And that's this is the impossible situation that he's in. I mean, I don't feel bad for him, but he is trying to say yes to both sides. He is actually probably considering, and we know he's done this a couple of times, funding both sides of this war so he can stay in office. And I don't think that's I obviously I, I think that we should put American troops on the border before we send them abroad. I think that's our big that should be a bigger national security priority for us. But also Biden can literally not make anyone happy in this scenario and it's going to cost him. Or even sending money to foreign nations before helping our own states. Look at what happened in Lahaina, in Hawaii, Flint, Michigan, in our border. Yeah. So there's money for other nations, but there's no money for U.S. Americans. They got money for war, but they can't feed the poor. Who said exactly. Who was that? Who said that? Tupac, I think. Was it Tupac? I yeah, think you're right. Yeah. I think it was Tupac. Tupac you Shakur. kids and your pop culture yeah. references. How fun. No, but it's funny because I'm, I'm, I'm not one... You know, when, when these leftists are like, you know, there are more empty houses than homeless people. We could solve the homeless problem overnight. I'm like, that doesn't solve the problem. But now we're looking at them taking illegal immigrants and putting them in apartment buildings. And it's like, well, there was a solution to the homeless problem. They could have just paid off these luxury hotels to take the homeless people in, effectively creating very nice shelters. Mm -hmm. They didn't care nope. about the homeless people in America. Nope. They care about the homeless people outside of America. They don't care about the veterans either. Yeah. The veterans are in the street. Look at New York City. Look at these mayors. Eric Adams, also Cheryl Jones in San Luis, Newsom, the governor of California. These are all useless, worthless elected officials that have driven cities to the ground. And they're just claiming their DEI card. That's what they're doing right now. They're playing the victim card. And it doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. The American people are fed up. They're yeah. fed up. And it is sad that we have seen these cities get torn to the ground because of these policies. So... It is up to us to actually fight back and get our guns ready, you know, because it has come to that point. It has come to the point that we have to defend ourselves. Women are getting killed and raped. How many more women have to get killed and raped until we do something about it? You've got to get training. You've got to uh, fight to change the laws to defend the Second Amendment because you end up with stories like Lake and Riley, who was this, you know, presumably this illegal immigrant who I believe had been arrested before was trying to rape her and she was unable to protect herself from a rapist who then crushed her skull. I was just last night thinking about gun, like gun control, actually being able to control your gun, um, being able to control your weapon and like training with it and how a lot of people probably haven't yet trained with guns. And I think that they should, if they're American Absolutely. and it's legal and they have they the should. opportunity, it's like big boy shit. Like it's time to, to grow up and do the real stuff in life, which is learn how to control weapons. Mm -hmm. And make sure legal, I recommend there's like firearm insurance. So in the event you have to defend yourself from a very serious threat, you don't have to worry about very serious legal issues after the fact. And so these these things exist. And I know a lot of people who are who are trained and advocates for Second Amendment uh, have this. But always just be careful because you got to keep it legal. And uh, we are winning the constitutional carry uh, argument. I think just the other day, I know someone fact checked this because someone super chatted that Louisiana was uh, going constitutional carry. But we got to be careful too. So uh, I certainly am a big, a big proponent of people having guns and uh, the Second Amendment, especially when we're dealing with the, with the crime spree that's brought us to the point where, you know, I, I, I'll say it like this. You know, we're sitting here being like, guys, you need to have guns. OK, is your Second Amendment right? You need to be trained with it. You need to understand the laws of your jurisdiction, because the last thing we want are good law abiding citizens going to jail. But look at what's going on in New York with the National Guard. The, it's the crime has gotten to the point where a conductor they reached their heads out, out of the window to check to make sure everyone's on the train before closing the doors. And someone walked up and slit his throat. This, this happened in New York. And so, and this is their fault. You, you can't defend yourself in this state. Mm -hmm. And so I would not, if you live in New York, man, uh, to, to the people in New York who are fighting the, the legal fight to get guns uh, legalized and they're, and they're winning, you know, good on them. But it's gotten so bad, they've deployed National Guard. With guns. With guns. With very powerful guns into the subways mm -hmm. and 250 state law enforcement. This is a problem. I'll tell you this. You know what? I got to be honest. I don't want anybody to have guns. 
I don't want anybody. I, want, I don't want anyone to have them. You know, you, you know, you get to the point where no one's walking around with guns. You get better security, law enforcement, policing, secure your borders, reinvigorate your community and your culture. But when you have in these cities, criminals being let go and the recidivism rates being through the roof, innocent people are being victimized and killed. And what could what more? What, what do you say to that at that point? At that point, it's how many more Lake and Riley stories do we have to have? She's not even the first story that anyone's ever talked about. Mm -hmm. And the frustrating thing to me about the Lake and Riley story is that we had there. Uh, uh, I, I can't even remember the woman's name in San Francisco. Do you remember this one a few years ago? I do know her. I'll hold on. I'll pull, I'll pull it. I can't remember. Huge, huge story. The point is all of these stories all the time of innocent law abiding people being killed by criminals, by illegal immigrants. And the illegal immigration is an issue because the crime could have been prevented if the laws were enforced. We should not have to live in a, pl in a country where people need to be armed all the time. But there's a reason why the founding fathers recognized the right to keep and bear arms was was paramount. For one, we had just had a war. So they were really concerned. What was her name? Katie Steinall. And also yeah. you were right about Louisiana. It was the 28th state. Too. Well, it was someone super chatted us that. And so I just looked it up. Fox has a report. So definitely uh, get armed, get trained, make sure everything you're doing is within the law and legal and be very careful because even in the instance where you're defending yourself, you face ser very serious legal uh, uh, exposure. That's a big part of tactical training that they teach you is, yes, you are. Even if you're the one defending yourself, unfortunately, a lot of times the, the courts don't care or won't care and that you you need to be ready for that. So a lot of they, they actually offer insurance through the tactical training. This one that I've been using and they're like, it's not super expensive and it'll you get lawyers that understand the law, self-defense law that you can contact in the you know, in the instance that something were to happen. And I think the idea, like uh, our culture will, will shift dramatically when everyone realizes you have to be on guard for your own safety. I mean, there are people who talk about, you know, when I was growing up, I could leave my door unlocked where I grew up. When I, you know, I could leave my car unlocked and now I can't do that, do that in this town. People feel the shift when crime is at, when crime is on the doorstep and people will choose to live differently, whether it be carry a weapon, whether it be to move out of cities. Uh, it will have a profound effect on our country. And I think maybe that's good because people will be more aware, self-aware. On the other hand, it will make people feel more stressed and more hopeless. They will feel like they can't trust people we, around them. We had something happen uh, a year ago where someone broke into one of our properties and they were armed and shots were fired. And were it not for, uh, I'll, I'll keep it very simple, our security, we don't know what these guys would have done. And it was th it's three guys. But, you know, our, our security being armed was able to prevent something much, much more serious. And so, look, man, this, the, the, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll wrap this up very, very simply. It has gotten so bad in New York, they've deployed the National Guard. We cannot live like this. And as the left comes out and says people shouldn't have guns, I'm like, right. The answer is we need better security. We need better better uh, law enforcement. We, I agree we need to fix the prison system. This is not solving the problem. But what New York did, they created this problem. And now they've made everything worse from everybody. We shouldn't have to live like that. But uh, without, you know, going on and beating a dead horse, let's jump to this next story. Well, let me uh, backtrack over there uh, because, Tim, bad guys with guns are stopped with good guys with guns. And the Second Amendment is the only amendment that's going to guarantee the first one. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.